Welcome to another edition of Moments with Mom and Dad. This is Mark and Stephanie Motor, and we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We pastor Berean Church here in Pittsburgh, and believe it or not, within two weeks, we, we will have been pastoring this church for 35 years. Hard to believe. Now, Galatians chapter 4 has an interesting passage. It says this, verses 24 through 26. These things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one is from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage. She is Hagar. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and represents the present Jerusalem and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem which is above is free. Notice this phrase, which is our mother. The Jerusalem from above is free. I want to talk a little bit about freedom when it comes to ministry, when it comes to the people God brings to us, how we are to equip them, train them, but then also to release them. It is very important to recognize the principle of freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I remember one person used to teach in their church a fourfold vision. They were to win, connect, disciple, and then send. And many believers are strong on the win, the connect, the disciple, but the sending is the hard part. And sending, however, is part of the Great Commission. It is part of what we're called to do. And if it's done right, you can send people and still keep a relationship. If it is done wrong, when you send people, you may never see them again. There's issues, there's challenges. We've seen it done both ways, and it's something that you really need to be proactive in doing. One of the important things to recognize in ministry, people say, well, Pastor Mark, that's your church and those are your sheep. And I understand that concept, but ultimately they're not my sheep. Jesus said, I will build my church. And so it's his church and they are his sheep. Now, there are times people say, Pastor Mark, we feel it's time to move on. Whether I agree with that or don't agree with that, the reality is people are free to do what they want to do. Larry Stock still always used to say, if you want to be free, you need to let your people be free. So I often say there are only two people in this church that cannot leave, and their last name is Motor. Beyond that, anyone else is free. They don't have to stay. They're not arm twisted. If they choose to stay, we love that. If they choose not to, that's okay, but they are free to obey the Lord. And I think it's important that as the visionary of your ministry, your church, that God always gives you a vision bigger than yourself. In fact, I had a friend who said, if what God tells you doesn't scare you, then you know it's not God. But he purposely gives you something scary and bigger beyond you so that you know it is him when it's finally fulfilled. And with that big vision that God gives you, he is going to send you gifts and talents it through people that you personally don't possess because you you're not the be all and end all of your ministry you can't be and so you need other components and parts and so god sends them to you so part of learning how to flow with the vision god has given you is to recognize the gifts and callings within those he has sent you to help fulfill the vision where we've seen probably a, a downfall from those who've been in ministry is oftentimes they can be intimidated or they have this concept that I have to have it all together. I am the leader and, and they're, they're, they're going to have to listen to me. And, and instead of kind of rejoicing and celebrating those gifts, releasing them into their gifts and callings, even within the vision, they contain them and, and keep them in areas of ministry where they're not really being fruitful. An example, I knew of a pastor who had these awesome gifted and talented people that they were literally leaving states and moving to his state to come to the work to do something for God. There was something that he said, something that he sparked within them. It was the vision, the vision empowered them to hey, we're selling our houses and we're gonna come and live there and we're gonna help you. So here were these awesome people which you could tell, that one's a teacher, that one's so gifted, this one could do that. And yet the pastor did not recognize what was within them and had them doing sort of menial tasks. 
here were these awesome teachers and probably prophets and who knows what else, and they're parking and directing cars in a parking lot. Nothing wrong with being a servant, but if God has given you these awesome, talented gifts, you need to plug them in where they're going to be of their most effectiveness and their most powerful um, utilization within your church. So one of the things I feel like to release those into what God's called them is that we're going to have to get over this idea that it's all about us. And we're going to ask God, Lord, help me not to be insecure. <laughs> help me not to be insecure. If you're going to send these giant gifts around me, I mean, maybe greater, three times greater, four times greater than even my own gift. Let me be how to stay humble. Let me be secure in you and what you've called me to do. And let me see the gifts and release them within the ministry itself so that they can function most effectively. I'll give you a recent example. We wanted to redo our membership class here at the church after COVID. And I had worked on a couple of things about two years back, had it all ready. We were going to teach it on a video and then we were going to have someone show it. And I asked someone to take the lead with this and she said, I'll be glad to, but she did some research and she came to me with some fresh ideas. She said, Pastor Mark, the research shows that most people like a live audience and a live teaching, not just a video. They like some other things that are to be done. And I listened to that and my pride was a little bit affected. I've, I've done this forever, but I realized, no, I've got to release this. I've got to bless that. I said, you go for it. You just do what's in your heart. And I went after our service back into the room with the new members class, and you can feel atmosphere. And you could tell that it was, it was a, a, just an atmosphere of joy and peace. People were connecting, they were laughing, they didn't want to leave afterwards. In fact, they stayed long after the church service was over. And I watched that for four weeks, and I realized that class was more effective with what she was doing than what I had been doing previously. That didn't bother me, that didn't threaten me. I loved it because it took pressure off of me. They still got the vision, they were still connected, even more so. So as we grow in God, we need to recognize we cannot be secure, insecure if someone has a greater gift than us. You pray for it and when God sends you, that doesn't threaten you. You rejoice that someone is using their gifts to their full potential and to the glory of God. And I think people are looking for a place where they can be under authority and yet given a lot of freedom. Maybe you can speak into them, give them a little bit of direction without stifling that creativity. But many great ideas can be found not just with you, but within your team. The older we get in ministry, the more we realize we don't want to do anything without a team. There still has to be a final decision maker. There still needs to be a final head. But I believe God's best is for teams to work together where creative ideas flows, a flow and people can use their creativity to the glory of God. Think about this. What did Genesis 1, 1 say? In the beginning, God created. Creation uh, of new ideas is something that he births, but primarily not just through one person, but through the team he assembles. And I think, too, when we release these gifts, we're going to ha have to allow them to do that part of the ministry to express their gifts through their own unique personality. It's not always going to be the way that you would have done it, the way that you see it, the way you would have handled it. When you really let something go, it's going to be look a little different. It may not be done the way that you would have, have it done. And we need to allow people the grace to make a mistake. Like, like you made a mistake in the beginning. You know, we, we often try something and it didn't work. And it's that total confidence that God's going to see the vision through regardless if, if something wasn't done the way we thought it should be done or it didn't go off the way we think it should have gone off. God is going to see the vision through. But as you trust God and you trust others and allow them to express their gifts through their own uniqueness, you're going to start to see the growth that you're desiring. You're going to start to see expressions in your church and, and teams will form, groups will form. And it's an exciting, it's exciting to allow God to make the vision that he's given to you bloom and blossom into what it could be. Absolutely. And I think in closing, I'd like to mention just a moment about how we leave a situation. When someone leaves, it's important to leave right and to leave well. 
I know as a pastor, a lot of people have come and gone. There are people that we never heard from again. They just left, and two months later, we found out they're someplace else. Sometimes they leave a note under the door. Sometimes they text. Sometimes they uh, just, just say little to nothing. But then other times people come in and say, Pastor, it's kind of in my heart to help another ministry, or I'm, I'm leaving for this reason. And we'll sit down, and I'll pray with them, and I will bless them, and maybe they'll pray with me in return. Here's what I found. If someone leaves well, they don't burn their bridges. And if we have a special conference or a special event, then they're comfortable to come back. We love seeing them. They love seeing us. We don't control because there's only one body, the body of Christ, and Jesus controls all of that. On the flip side, if they don't leave well, usually they don't feel comfortable coming back again. And I believe it's important, even if God does call you to leave, to leave well. Tell people what you're doing, be a person of integrity, do it with honor. Pastor, I'm leaving because of this. I know sometimes you're afraid because what will they say? Well, a good pastor will bless you and release you. They may talk to you a little bit about it to make sure it's the good move, but my job isn't to control someone. It is just to make sure that they continue to serve the Lord and follow the will of God. The other thing is don't leave just because of an offense. I didn't get what my way or I didn't agree with that decision. Never allow it to be because of offense or being upset or a disagreement only do it based on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I know people that have been to 10 churches in 10 years. That's not being led by the Spirit. That's being led by emotions or offenses or whatever. So if you leave well, you keep the blessing of God flowing. Would you like to pray? Yes, and I just want to remind us of the story we've all heard about the man who's on his roof in the flood. And he's praying to God, God, save me. The, the flood's coming, I'm going to drown. And then here came a boat along saying, hey, would you like to hop in the boat? Oh no, God's going to save me. And off goes the boat. And then here comes a helicopter. Can we save you? Oh no, God's going to save me. And he eventually drowns and he ends up in heaven. <laughs> and he says, God, why did you save me? He says, well, I sent you a boat and a helicopter. And you're wondering why the vision isn't fulfilled. Because there are boatloads of people in your congregation, boatloads of people in your ministry who are full of creative ideas, gifts and callings and talents from God. God may even have to helicopter some of them in. I mean, they just seem to came out of nowhere, but they're full of gifts and talents and abilities from God to help you fulfill the vision. God is not leaving you alone. He knows that you need help to do what he's called you to do. And I'm, my prayer for you is that you're going to recognize it and release them to do the ministry. So we are gonna pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who's on this today. I pray, Lord God, that you would open their eyes. Lord, just as Abraham was there with Isaac and he was about ready to slay Isaac, you said, Lord, he lifted up his eyes, he lifted up his head and saw the ram in the thicket. Lord, let their eyes be open. The ram was already in the thicket before he climbed the mountain. Lord, the gifts and talents are already around them before you even gave them the vision. And Lord, let them see the ram in the thicket. Lord, for some that are on this, Lord, they need to find that coin in the fish. Lord, let them find the coin in the fish, Lord. Look, Lord, the gifts. The, the talents, the abilities that are within the people, let them be able to recognize. And Lord, let them have the courage to release and let them go. Release and let them flourish in what you've called them to do. And Lord, for some, they are staying and multiplying, but some maybe need to go to another work or go to another country or go to another state. Lord, let them have the courage that, Lord, if they are sending away they're sowing seed, and it will be multiplied back to them again. Father, help us to be secure in you and who we are. Help us not to be intimidated. Help us to have a, our image is in you. We are in Christ. And Lord, it's no longer us that lives anyways. We're hidden. How can you find us? We're hidden in Christ. It's all about you. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.